gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome to AZ Arena for today's matchup between the 20-0-1 Walpole Rebels and your Brockton Boxers. As always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Mr. Kevin Cairo, of course, the athletic director of Brockton High School, Mr. Cairo. An interesting matchup we've got here, the 20-0-1 Walpole Rebels, Super oh, 8 wow. uh, hopefuls in the MIAA tournament. Their yeah, I don't senior know what goaltender. Would I don't know what would keep them out of the Super 8 at 20-0-1. The Catholic Conference. Yeah. Their senior goaltender, James Corcoran, has allowed 11 goals all year, three of which were put up by the Norwood, Norwood. Mustangs. Yeah. Brockton's starting goaltender on the other end of the ice is none other than Adam Stagno, and he's had a very successful stretch in the last four games. Zach Sylvia right off the opening faceoff. Walpole wearing their away navy blue jerseys, orange trim, with dueling swords on their shoulders. Brockton, on the other hand, their home white jerseys, black and red trim, and the boxer head on the stomach. Right off the bat, Corcoran making a save and covering it up for the faceoff. Yeah, and that's the key to any tournament playoff hockey. You have to ride the hot goalie. I've seen it so many times in the NHL and shouldn't be any different here in, in high school level. Um, if you have somebody that's stopping the puck, that takes a lot of care of all the little stuff that doesn't go your way. I mean, but 20-0-1. 20 one that, uh, that is impressive. And we see our second straight team with 23 skaters and three goalies listed on the roster. Anybody from Brockton? It wouldn't <laughs> surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me. Junior forward Dylan Hannafin. Yes, of relation to Noah Hannafin of the Carolina Hurricanes. Well, I'm just curious to see, you know, what Walpole does that makes them the team that they are. What little things do they do? How do they attack the offensive zone? How do they set things up? I'm just curious to see. Well, in last year's matchup, the Boxers tying the Rebels three to three. They were up with about a minute and a half to go. And Walpole was able to put one home to tie it up. This one deflecting into the Rebel bench. A minute into this one, still scoreless. Walpole starting off a little bit slower than one would expect. We have a center ice faceoff, Marissa Massaro. I'm sure still sore from that Natick game. She had six block six shots. Six block shots. Including a slap shot right off her right knee. And against Durfee, she was checked very hard into the boards at least two or three times, but never missed a shift. Newest commit of Franklin Pierce University. Walpole winning this face off. Brockton able to poke it loose. And I no. think that's the boxes in order to, to hang in this game. They can't have any mental mistakes. They can't get lazy in the defensive zone and turn the puck over. And that that's a big one. Keeping the mental mistakes to a minimum. Well. Brockton sending a headhunter into their own bench. Face off in the boxer defensive zone. Number 10, Matt Morris. Sending out to the blue line. One timer and it deflected just wide off the stick of number 25. That is Ryan Boyajian. Yeah, you can just tell that the, the skaters into for the Walpole are ah, they're, they're quick. This line out here is some guys that can really move around. Equation losing an edge and Nathan El Shami able to clear it all the way down. A deflection against Walpole ruled icing waved off. Goyette line on the ice. As Morris into the slot, oh. a shot and a goal. Yeah, that was that was a nice give and go right there. Patrick Donovan tapping it home. Captain uh, to captain, I think. Yep, the senior captain, assisted by number two, Robert Colburn. And by 41 seconds, 
You were right, the first goal in under three minutes. And they're gonna give it to Ryan Birch, assisted by Donovan and Colburn. Colburn shot, saved by Stagg, and he holds on for the faceoff. 12.22 to go. I think you're gonna see a lot of that today. Just they put the puck on net. I mean, and that's, that's what good teams do. They put the puck on net, they wait for a rebound, they wait for a little breakdown, and so far I'm impressed just, just with the overall speed of this Walpole team. I don't think that we've seen anybody that is this quick from to the position line. to position. Shot deflected by Atten. Recovering was number seven, Andrew Moore. Moore with it, slamming it past Atten back into the Brockton zone. Al Birmingham able to clear it out into the neutral oh. zone. Because we haven't yet seen a team that is undefeated. Stag covering this one up. The net might be off its moorings. 11.44 to go. New and different, did somebody oh sneeze yeah, on yeah. it? <laughs> Someone breathed in the general direction. Well, Poe taking over a semi-break in the slot, a shot and a goal, number three, Cullen McGlynn, the junior forward, putting this one home. Yeah, and that's what we talked about, that's the defensive turnover. Going to come back to, to bite him. So it's McGlynn off of the face off. Snuck in behind the boxer defense. The assist to Matt Morris and Dylan Hannafin. Icing waved off. Walpole. Again, showing that tremendous speed. Up two to nothing, just a short four minutes into the first period. Now McGlynn, this one popping up, not hitting the protective netting above the ice. He came within maybe three inches. So play continues, Zach Sylvia stopping and spinning away from but I'm sure it would be a tremendous hit by the captain, Patrick Donovan. Now Sylvia dumping it into the Walpole zone as two Rebels hit the ice. Corcoran playing this one. Bridges goes down and a two on one up ice for the Rebels. A shot deflecting off the right leg of Sylvia and he comes up a little bit limp. Zach Sylvia hurting, skating over to the boxer bench. That would be a huge loss for the boxer. Ah, he'll be back, don't one. worry about that. He'll be right back. Walpole dancing in and out of every boxer on the ice. Marissa Massaro creating a turnover. Brockton unable to generate a scoring opportunity. Peyton Sylvia now. Engaged with Donovan. Backhanded shot, loose in the slot, and Walpole unable to get one on net. Brockton able to clear out. Boxer sliding, that was Peter Sylvia, about 20 feet on his backside. Always remember, it's a, sheet, your skates. it's a sheet of ice out there. It really is. I don't know if they turn the heat up in here, but it, it's actually um, it's actually comfortable today. The the base layers and and long johns certainly help a little bit. <laughs> after after a few games, you learned your lesson. Oh, I mean, I'm not dressed any differently than I was the other day, and I both caught it frostbite in here. It is also about 60 degrees outside. Yeah. So. Kirkshank around the boards looking for Peter Sylvia. The 
Saar chipping it into the wall pole zone. Brockton changing out. Sylvia back on the ice. Or Zach Sylvia, that is. And he has the puck now for Brockton. This one popping and up. And the one the 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 quick observation, what I have noticed, the difference between Walpole and Brockton. Walpole is constant motion. I mean, they're constantly moving. They're looking for a seam. Um, even in the defensive zone, there's somebody always moving toward the puck, collapsing the defense down so they don't have a clear shot. And those little things make a big, big difference. Morris losing an edge behind the net. Now Birmingham out into the neutral zone, Goyette. And then they put two, I mean, as soon as somebody gets a puck, there's a body right on them. Lermo sending it across the crease, nobody on the receiving end. Birmingham backhanding it, looking. Oh, shot Brockton on that. Another shot. And yet another save, probably his 500th of the year for James Corcoran. <laughs> 11 goals on all year against Corcoran. Oh, the and juicy Brockton. rebound. This is the final game of the year for the Walpole Rebels. Of course, the Boxers play on Friday against the Mansfield Hornets. Right here at AZF, we'll be bringing you that game on Brockton Community Access. And then it's tournament time for both boys and girls basketball as well as the Brockton High Hockey Team. Mm -hmm. The girls and boys finish up today. Their seasons will end respectively. And our girls are actually playing in the championship game over at Norwell tonight. In the Norwell tournament, boys are in the consolation game over at Mansfield today against Dighton Rehoboth. So we're hoping that both teams can end on a high note and take a little momentum going into the tournament. Frank Atten makes a nice move, and now a two-on-one up ice for the boxers. Frank Atten and Anthony Paul in a shot and a glove save by James Corcoran. Shocking. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Number 22, Tom Wilbur, senior defenseman, headed to the locker room for the Walpole Rebels. No, he's just going down to have a cup of coffee. Yeah, warm up. Not like he's skating on a giant sheet of ice. <laughs> Peyton Sylvia. Saucering it through the neutral zone, looking to connect with Bridges. Walpole taking over. Chipped down by Paul, set back deep. And the Rebels taking back over. 6.29 to go in the first period. Walpole up two to nothing over the Brockton Boxers. Kirkshank now behind the net, taken by number 24, Paul Heffernan, the senior forward. Jalen Bridges able to create separation and dump it all the way down the ice. Well, that's a good little stretch for the boxers here. They've um, created a couple of turnovers. Well, Massaro could have gotten killed <laughs> going across the slot. Shot glove saved by Stagg. He holds on <clears throat> for the faceoff, 550 to go in the first period. Walpole without a shot on net, and oh my God, it, it might have been like a minute and 20 seconds. Uh, it, the boxers, I mean, they're, they're playing a little more aggressive, and I, you know, it's when you see somebody come in at, at undefeated, there's a little intimidation factor, and you don't think you can hold your own, but once the game gets underway and the butterflies get out, I mean. Oh, Kirkshank just got <coughs> slammed by a number. 10, Matt he Morris. Did. Took a huge uh, hit, but now sliding down to the ice, negating a possible two-on-one with not much room in front of the net. Oh, I think that was a little payback. <laughs> Morris forward of the goal line, gets around Mercer this with sorrow. Is, this is the difference between Brockton and Walpole that I see. Boxers are kind of hanging back, letting the, the Walpole offense dictate what they do instead of going out, being aggressive, poke checking the puck away. They, they need to do that because it'll get ugly quick. 
4.55 to go, two thirds of the way through the first period. Block shot for the boxers now, Anthony Paul streaking up ice. And it's gonna be an offsides ruled against the boxers. There's not many times that heading into the tournament you get to face one of the top teams in the state and one that will undoubtedly make the Super 8 in the MIAA tournament. The boxers using this as a measuring stick to see what they've got heading into the South Sectional Tournament. Not a bad effort so far. Pad saved by Stagnone on the rebound. Donovan can't do anything with it. And if Walpole by chance doesn't get in to the Super we'll 8, we'll see, the, him, we'll see him again. There's a real good chance we could see them in the opening round. Stagnone knocking the net off its moorings once again. Which isn't very tough to do here at the AZF. No. Stag immediately diving on the loose puck. 4.06 to go. Could be a very long 4.06 and second two periods should Stagnone remain. But they just need to play the and they just need to put a body And no standing around. A couple of sticks get tied up and Walpole has some room. This one deflecting off the end boards on Stagnone. He covers up with the glove for the face off. 343 to go. Walpole getting the puck off the face off off the outside of the post. Peter Sylvia chipping it up for Goyette. Can't go skate to stick. Oh, Sweet Lou's going head first into the boards. He's up though. I saw him go down. Deflecting on Stag Known, bouncing in and he holds on for the face off. 321 to go. Now, will I have you as a broadcast partner for baseball games? Our director of operations is right next to me. You could ask him. <laughs> the silence is deafening. <laughs> <laughs> We've gotten inquiries about any different number of sports, led, of course, by Miss Balboni. Oh, sure. She's desperate for us to go and well maybe cover a well maybe we game. could maybe we can do a you know a special one game pick pick a sport do one game a year we did volleyball last year that was interesting yeah well, I just think the kids like it when they know the cameras on them if we maybe can do one game we'll talk maybe get one not a whole we can't dedicate you to a whole season we just can't afford to pay you a big salary oh yeah all of <laughs> like, like Joe, like hour, Joe yeah. Buck. Joe Buck, and he still <laughs> can't read the names right. <laughs> the Mad Dog research team has informed me that there's a possible Spellman Brockton High baseball matchup. It's baseball, it's for certain. It's already done. I've scheduled it. Apparently, Here. we'll be there at the stadium. Uh, it's just always a big thrill for anybody to play over there. One of the nicest facilities in the state. Yeah. That'll be good because Coach Brennan, former Cardinal Spell alum. Yeah, a little conflict of interest going on there. Oh no, he wants to win. <laughs> 156 to go in the first period here at AZ Afarina, the undefeated Walpole Rebels. I was hoping that he would, I hope he would go for a mercy roll <laughs> after five. Good block out in front by Zach Sylvia. 
one and a but half. But this is where they go. need to really keep focused. This is the mental, like, the, oh, that's a good poke check. But they need to get out and be aggressive. Let's go put a body on somebody. Don't let them get too comfortable. Oh, that's that's a huge hit. Yeah, but that's what they need to do. They need to show this team that they're not going to get pushed around. And that's fine. It's part of the game. Well put back Especially into the come tournament zone. time. Shot, and that one's a headhunter that went wide. Be able to keep it in. Yeah. And taking the hit to move the puck was Michael Thompson. I like to see. This is a this is a good aggressive shift here. A shot that was chipped out in front off the forehand of Zach Sylvia. Walpole able to recover. Now it's Patrick Donovan backhanding. Oh boy. A shot oh, and a an excellent save. save by Adam Stagg. Real no, good he's save. been Didn't, very strong yeah. in net today. Didn't give up a rebound. Well, that was a good shift from the boxers. Even though they didn't clear the zone, they put their bodies on some kids and say, hey, we're here to play. 41.2 left in the first period. This one chipped to the half boards. Nathan El Shami able to clear it all the way down the ice. Icing waved off now with 30 seconds to go. Walpole trying to set up in the boxer zone oh, one more did. time. It's a two on one. A shot oh. and it might have hit the wrist of Stagnone up into the protective netting. Oh, he was going top shelf. 21.1 to go. Defensive zone faceoff. It's Jalen Bridges going against senior captain Owen Hunter. Bridges winning that faceoff, but Walpole able to take over. Yeah, Walpole has won the majority of the faceoffs today. Oh, a shot. That one looked like it was deflecting five hole. It's loose beyond the net. Good awareness by Justin Crookshank. Three seconds left. The last oh second shot boy. stick saved by Adam Stagnone. Jeez. The buzzer sounds oh. and Brockton escapes quite literally. Oh, dodging bullet after bullet after bullet. Two to nothing the score at the end of the first period. Walpole on top by what could have been a lot more. I'd say at least three or four. But hey, good goaltending. But this is a good team. This is a really good team. Brockton certainly not lying down by any stretch of the imagination. What do the boxers have to do to get on the board against one of the top goaltenders in the state? I just think they need to, what they did that last minute and a half, they they were physical, they they need a break. Honest to God, that's what they're gonna need. They're gonna need a lucky bounce um, and just keep fighting hard. Well, two to nothing at the end of the first period, the Walpole Rebels on top of the Brockton boxers. We're gonna step aside and take a short break and bring you second period action right after this. Hey Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming! We're going biking! Yeah! I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi babe, how was school today? Hi Dad, it was great. Okay honey, I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in. Because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Coach, down 2 nothing after the first. What's the strategy going into the second? Uh, well, they're difficult to score against, uh, so we've got to get pucks of a net. Um, keep them to the outside. They're buzzing around. They're, they're quick. They're really aggressive uh, in the offensive zone. So, you know, we've got to, uh, wings got to make sure they win in the battles on the wall um, and chip out, relieve pressure. Uh, if we don't do that, we're, we're going to be in some trouble. Well, the saying goes, ride the hot goaltender. Adam Stagnone and James Corcoran, both hot. Corcoran's allowed 11 goals all year. What's the strategy to try to get one past him? Uh, do whatever you can. Uh, it's going to be a dirty goal uh, off a rebound or some, some kind of fluky play. Just keep throwing pucks of a net and uh, hope something good happens. Coach, good luck in the second. Thank you. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. 
Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Welcome back into AZ Alpharina for second period action between the Walpole Rebels and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Joined alongside my broadcast partner for today's festivities, Mr. Kevin Caro. Brockton right off the bat in the second getting a shot on net. And Corcoran was forced to make a save. Corcoran, once again, 11 goals all year. And the Rebels come in at 20-0-1. And this is their final regular season game before going into, one would assume, the Super 8 tournament. Justin Crookshank off the boards. And Walpole taking over. Atten fighting for it. And Mr. Caro, the message in between periods was... Do whatever you can. It's going to be a dirty goal. Keep pounding away. Put more on net. And, and don't be afraid to go into the dirty areas. Oh, I like that. I don't want to keep it dirty when somebody gets a penalty and does something stupid. But they are going to have to play physical. Clean and physical. Corcoran making his third save of the period off of a shot by Jalen Bridges. I don't know if I would call that a shot. <laughs> the puck went in the general direction off of the, net, right. in the net, so. Maybe that's why high, he has such a high save percentage if things like that are considered shots. It was kind of like a wave in. The referee needs some help tying down his fight straps. <laughs> Yeah, we got a wardrobe malfunction, but we're back. Walpole winning the faceoff, number nine with it, Ted McElaney. Over to Robert Coburn. Coburn assisting on the first Walpole goal. And the other thing that I just noticed and with this Walpole team. Oh, tipped, oh. They do a really good job using the boards and with the angles of how to pass the puck. It's something obviously that they practice um, because if there's somebody on the other side of the ice, they have done a really good job just utilizing the boards, banking it, and it almost will land right where they're supposed to. And that, I don't, that does not happen by accident. And that's normally something that takes a few games or practices. Now a semi-break for the Rebels. A shot oh, of that's a nice an excellent save. skate save yeah, off the great toe of Adam save. And he stuck with it and didn't commit too early and made a really nice stop there. That's Ryan Boyajin looking up to the rafters. Adam Stagnone. Probably about a dozen saves already today. I think we said 33 was the over under. At this rate, I think I'll take the over. Bridge is all the way down the ice and this will go for icing against the boxers. The music selection, once oh. again, excellent here at AZF. Oh, a little bit of Bon Jovi. Uh, it's almost bon Jovi. like somebody stole my, my playlist from my iPad. Walpole winning the face off, unable to keep it cleanly in the Brockton zone. Now dumping it in. Now Birmingham tipping it to Zach Sylvia. A shot zings high in. Hits glass. Unable to get it cleanly in the slot was Tyler Page, the junior forward. Now Frank Atten yeah. off the boards and yeah. down the ice. And that last band, Bon Jovi, John Bon Jovi, real good friends with Bill Belichick. Need a little Aerosmith in here. 
Oh, well, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Good friends with Robert Kraft. Yep. And that is the band that I have seen the most times live in concert. Not that you really care. Aerosmith? Uh, bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. I've seen him at least a dozen times, and I'm going again April 1st down at Mohegan Sun. Well, that award for me, not that it matters, goes to Paul McCartney. Oh, which is any time I get a chance to see Sir Paul at Fenway, that's as good as it gets. I went down to the new Yankee Stadium the year it opened yeah. to see Paul. Oh, he's he's amazing. Still at 70, what, three? Something like he's up yeah, there. Yeah, I mean he's he'll up there. he'll play a three hour show that's just nonstop. Kind of like the wall pole offense. Nonstop. Oh, yeah. yep. Rockton able to clear it away from Adam Stagnone. So this is where they need to catch that break. Oh. Peter Sylvia can't connect with it cleanly, so Walpole dumping it back into the neutral zone. So the year I saw Paul McCartney, it was like four days after Derek Jeter broke the hits record. Okay. And being the comedian he is, Sir Paul said, does anyone know about this oh, Derek a... Jeter guy? <laughs> I hear he's got more hits than me. <laughs> I think we have, uh, against uh, the we're going to have a hooking, I think. Oh, Captain Hook herself, Marissa Massaro, headed to the sin bin for a minute and a half, a minor penalty. And Walpole, not that they needed any help offensively, goes on a man advantage. Ten fifty-one to go in the second period. A minute and 30 second power play to the Walpole Rebels. Anthony Paul into the Walpole zone with speed, wasting some time off of the clock. Uh, Anthony's got to be careful that he can get back on defense. Now Walpole gains clean entry into the boxer zone. A little Brad Marsh on this, oh, yeah. you say? A little ball of hate. Everybody's favorite pest. <laughs> At and off the boards, Walpole uh, able to keep it in a shot, deflecting off of the stick of Zach Sylvia into the protective netting. I'd love to see ACDC live. Right. I'd love to That's go another one, yep, we've, I've seen. A shot, a pad save on the rebound, and it went wide. Well, live music in general is so good, and just is especially when it's rock. Yeah. Rockton able to clear it out. Anthony Paul going down to the ice to chip it down the river. Number seven back in Andrew Moore, the senior defenseman. A senior laden team, this Walpole Rebels. Oh, a shot. Never saw it. And off of the post and in. He never saw that. A senior laden team led by Patrick Donovan. There's 12 senior skaters out of the 23 on the roster. And two senior goaltenders for the Walpole Rebels. Going all in this year. They must have hit the salary cap. I think Paid so. Paid the luxury tax. Tyler Page in. And Boy. Stag doesn't know where it is. Rockman clearing it out. And now Nathan L. Shami popping one high and wide on James Corcoran. Corcoran, another senior captain of the Rebels. Jalen Bridges around the boards looking for El Shami. Intercepted by the Rebels. And Zach Sylvia behind it out of Stagnone. Walpole able to take away and launching a backhanded shot on that. Gloved down by 
Justin Crookshank. Oh, this boy. one zings high, and Walpole's just launching shots from anywhere and everywhere. Number two, Robert Coburn but at the They just moved the puck so efficiently and just quick, and there's not a lot of time to have anybody even step up into them. I'd like to see this team, this Walpole team. I think before the Bruins bye week, this Walpole team could have taken it to the oh. Bruins. A shot and another goal for the another Rebels. Now off the inside of the post again. This one courtesy of Patrick Donovan. Sorrow out of the box, 8.14 to go. This one getting out of hand, four to nothing. The Rebels on top. Coburn up to Morris, up to McGlynn. McGlynn the second goal across and Stagnon diving on it, a quick whistle, the puck scored it loose, but we'll have a face off in the boxer defensive zone. A gathering of the aggressors in front of Adam Stagnone and refs get in there and say, listen, let's not stay here longer than we have to. And they're, oh. and they're just firing from everywhere. Shot saved by Stagnon. The goal coming from senior captain Owen Hunter, assisted by Robert Colburn, his second assist of the day. 7.45 to go in the second. And Brockton with one game left in the regular season. That coming Friday, puck drop at 2 o'clock. Against Here Mansfield, in ADF, right? Against the Mansfield Hornets. I really don't know much about. Well, we have not played Mansfield in hockey the last couple of years. Normally Silver Lake oh, is on the roster. Anthony call in on a break. Oh. A shot saved by Cork oh. on the rebound and we're gonna have a penalty. Interference going against number 14, Michael Thompson. Oh, I thought maybe for- Where's the penalty shot? I'd like to see Anthony call in on a penalty I shot. I would too. A good save from the goalie. Anthony had a really nice break. I think Anthony's signature move is to go top shelf. Top shelf. <laughs> yep. Well, number 14, Michael Thompson, the senior defenseman. And I just in the think box. that, man, just look at the size of the goalie here. I mean, he's he's big. I think you need to beat him five hole. Because when he goes down, I still think that his shoulder is right about at the crossbar. He's Ben Bishop like. Yeah. Yeah. He's Six big. Six foot something and. Yep, you, it's, you gotta beat him low on five hole. That's what I, that, that would be my advice to Anthony if he has that breakaway again. Well, the way Thompson skated over to the penalty box looking at the bench like, I know I committed a penalty, please don't sit me <laughs> for the rest of the game. <laughs> There's plenty of depth on this Walpole roster. And again, 23 skaters dressing for today's game. Enough to fill both benches in the Walpole. The bench, the hanging over the boards and normally where the trainers and the extra equipment goes on the back bench. But just one bus. They all fit on Just one, bus. one bus. Must have been a pretty big bus. Massaro dropped pass for Oh, Bridges. nice move. Uh-oh. Oh. Bridges fighting to keep it in the zone, ultimately popping out and chasing it down the ice, stopping, spinning, and heading back up Creek. Power play over, 542 left to go. Over. Over. Seems like I it just blinked. started. <laughs> Face off coming all the way down to the wall pole end of the bench. Uh, end of the ice, excuse me. It's been a long week. It started. Seems like on we've Thursday, been living yeah. living here at the rink. We get to do it again on Friday. Taking short vacations over to the gym. Yeah. 
shot hitting Goyette in the high slot. Walpole back north. Peter Sylvia taking this one for the Brocken. Played by Corcoran behind his net. He shoots it off glass. Now in the slot, oh. a shot blocker saved by Corcoran. All Peter right. Sylvia with that opportunity for the boxers. Five minutes to go in the second period. Walpole up four to nothing. Sent a little bit too long for Morris and Brockton recovering in the neutral zone. That's not a shot. Officially registered as one because <laughs> Corcoran had to play it. We've seen goals in the NHL come from 150 foot shots oh, the, from the blue line. Yeah, the, the ones that skip and just take that weird bounce. Because who could forget Martin Brodeur's goal from <laughs> the year before he retired. On the power play, he made a save and kicked it so far out, it hit a stanchion <laughs> 175 feet down the ice and made its way into the empty net. Known with another save. And yet another defensive zone faceoff, which Walpole wins. A one timer off of that faceoff, hitting Jalen Bridges' skate in front, reflecting to the half boards. Now Frank Atten dumping it in, takes a funky bounce, and Corcoran went behind his net. Yeah, and it came right back. Good defensive play to knock that away. Well, the onslaught of shots from Walpole has seemingly slowed up. I think you spoke too soon. <laughs> Just a little bit of time to reload <laughs> the machine gun. Uh huh. Kirk Shank blocking this one out in front. Bounces to Atten, who clears it out into the neutral zone. Oh, come on. Anthony Paul looking for Atten, doesn't connect. Now a three on two off ice for the Rebels. A shot in, wow. another one top corner. Owen Hunter, his second of the game, and Walpole puts up a five spot with mm. 2.55 to go in the second period. Mm. Boy, that was quick. Never saw Laser it. Laser shot. Yeah, <laughs> wrist shot too. Walpole winning yet another faceoff, probably their 20th win of the day. Owen oh, Hunter unassisted, his second no. consecutive goal for the Walpole Rebels. Backhanded shot, this one hits the glass behind Adam Stagnone. Stag covering up for the faceoff. 2.27 to go oh. in the second period. <laughs> I'd like to see the boxes score. Just get a little momentum going into the third period. See if we can catch a break. Well, for those of you diehard hockey fans, the Mad Dog trivia question of the day. On this day in history, 37 years ago, mm -hmm. what happened? 30, is it sports related? It's sports related. 
37 Do years ago. Do the math ago. first, and it'll hit you like a like a truck. All right, so it'll be 1980. Miracle on Ice. The Miracle on Ice. First guess. It took Jay Miller, our director of operations, the entire ride over here in a couple of hints. Oh, that was. <laughs> he asked for a oh, year, man. a decade. Was it hockey related? Is it Bruins related? Miracle on Ice, 37 years ago today. The I remember it US like it was yesterday. Team. And I mean, when you used to play street hockey out on the pond, you always wanted to be Mike Arruzzioni. You wanted to be Jim Craig if you were in net. And that was a really great time to be a kid. And with that, all that going on, I remember watching the Olympics, you know, before you could DVR things and before you had all the instant, uh, what do they call them, the spoilers where people would tell you beforehand what happened. You actually watched the Olympics and saw what happened live. One minute to play in the period, one minute. 37 years ago today. Hey, wow. The U.S. Olympic hockey team. Now, have you been up defeated. to Lake Placid at all? Not yet. I no, it's go. cool. I, I mean, go. it's a cool place. I was up there a couple summers ago, and we did the whole Olympic Village tour. We went up to the top of the 90-meter um, the ski jump, which is insane to see that anybody would jump off of that and then we did um we did a uh, bobsled ride we actually got in wow. with two of the guys from the bobsled team and my wife and i crawled in the four-person bobsled and, we, and you go down the track on wheels and it, i mean you want to talk about hot hot pounding who, who screamed more you or your wife it was me <laughs> there's no Believable. question about it because right before we went on, you, you have to drive in a, in a car to get up to the top of the mountain. And we saw the medical crew rushing. <laughs> no, and this is a true story. The medical crew comes rushing out, and I'm like, what happened? And there you see on the track is a bobsled tipped upside down. Oh, jeez. With a couple of people holding their arms. and I mean, So apparently the wheels fall off from time to time. And when it does, that seems like a. So that's why it, it, is I'm signing my life away, and signing the. Um, oh, this one the, almost the, found the, the, the waiver. The yeah, but all ended well. I want to say that uh, we topped out at, at 58 miles an hour. It's faster than my mom lets me go on the highway. <laughs> yeah. The buzzer sounds. The second period yeah. has come to an end. Five to nothing, the Walpole Rebels on top of the Brockton Boxers. Mr. Cairo, Brockton stepping it up a little bit offensively, but Corcoran's been strong in yeah. net for the Rebels. It's going to be tough to get something by him. I mean, he's just, uh, they're fundamentally a sound hockey team. All aspects, starts with the goalie, defense, offense, they're, they're a complete team, and it's going to be tough. But like we said before in a couple of the games earlier this year, if they can win the third period, come out with a, a moral victory, uh, that's what they're going to need to pull out of this. Well, five to nothing, the Rebels on top at the end of the second period. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you third period action right after this. Hey, Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming. We're going biking. Yeah. I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey, I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in, because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. 
Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Coach down 5 nothing after 2 to one of the top teams in the straight state. What's the strategy going into the third? No quit. Keep playing. Uh, you know, uh, have some pride. You know, uh, these are the type of teams you're going to see in the tournament. So we've got to figure out how we're going to play a team like this in the future. So uh, there should be no quit and, uh, you know, all-out effort and uh, try and figure, figure some things out. Certainly a measuring stick game against one of the top teams in the state and this, uh, one, a team that's going into the Super 8. What's, uh, what's your mentality going into the third period? Are you trying to say, listen, this is what we're going to see in the tournament, so if you want to make it? Yeah, I mean, uh, the difference has been speed, uh, strength, you know, um, and read and react. We're, we're, uh, we're reacting late, so they're getting to all the loose bucks. Um, so those are the kind of things we've got to recognize what's going on. We've got to be stronger on our sticks. Um, you know, it, it, we're, we're spending a lot of time, a lot of energy in the D zone, so we've got to uh, play smarter and do the simple things. And, uh, you know, like I said, just kind of trying to figure it out, get things done quicker. Coach, good luck in the third. Thank you. Welcome back into AZ Arena for a third period action between the Walpole Rebels and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Kevin Caro, Anthony Paul, coming off with a steal, a backhanded, uh, we'll call it a shot on net, easily saved by James Corcoran, who has had a clean sheet thus far today, and for most of the season for that matter, 11 goals all year by the senior goaltender. Five to nothing the score coming into this third period. And Brockton has turned its mentality to this is a Super 8 team. This is what we're going to see in the tournament. So let's like said, start it, trying to if, match up. If they can win this period, I, I would call that a moral victory. Well, number three, Cullen McGlynn with it. Number eight with a shot and a save by Adam Stagnone. Oh. Oh, Ryan geez. Birch, the junior forward, and we play on. Loose out in front, unable to get a shot on net was Patrick Donovan. He's already got a goal today. Number eight shot, oh. Pat save. Oh, oh, no. oh what a nice. glove save, diving to the ice. Two for good Adam ones. Stagnone. Well, Coach said we're floundering around our defensive zone. We need yeah. to spend more time 200 feet down the ice. I agree. I agree with Coach, and they can't sit on their heels. Even though they're chasing five, you have to win the final period before you go into your last game on Friday with Mansfield. Just something to build upon. You just can't get sloppy. Stick saved by Stagnone. Walpole recovering. They just don't want to see some bad habits. Back in shot off the outside of the apron. Birch to number 24, Paul Heffernan. Shot zinging off the glass. As we mentioned, 37 years ago today, the famous call from Do you Al believe Michaels. in miracles? Do you believe in miracles? Now, have you seen the movie Miracle? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's one of my favorites. Of course, we're looking like we're going to be back in those days because the NHL doesn't want to let the pros play in the Olympics. Yep. And I think from an owner's standpoint that you, you don't want to risk an injury and and I get it to a degree. And I honestly think that it, it, Olympics have become more or less a professional all-star game in a lot of the sports. I mean, you have the Olympic basketball dream team. They shouldn't lose. Right. I mean, hockey these Ho days is a lot more evenly matched. No one's going to match up against the United States in basketball. But hockey, you've got Russia's a powerhouse, mm -hmm. Finland, Sweden. 
U.S., Canada. I mean, and when I watched the, the World Juniors this year, that's that was a really great tournament, the World Junior Hockey Tournament, all amateur. So it can be done. From a, from a fan standpoint, I think it's wrong. I think as a fan of the game, Stagnone makes another pad save. If I was from Russia, as a fan of the sport, I would want to see, you know, Pavel Datsuk skating for Russia. And, and trying to get the country back on top of the podium. And Olympics really is the pinnacle of the sport. Mm -hmm. A shot and a goal, number is that, four is with that it. Is that a trick? Owen Hunter, that's a hat trick for Mr. Hunter, the senior captain. That's a great celebration for the Walpole Rebels. It's now six to nothing with 10.47 left in the third period. Speaking from personal experience, there is a point in time where the scoreboard will stop racking up should it get to that point. Sylvie off the boards from Bridges. He puts I'm it hoping, in the wall pulls I'm on. hoping we don't get to see that. Yeah, you and me both. Offsides against the Rebels. Now, what league, I should know this, but I'm going to ask you, what league is Walpole in? The base state, I think. I think you may be right. I think there's two divisions in the base state. And We're going to get the Mad Dog Research Team on it. You don't want to ask Siri? It's the trivia question for next game. All right. Is what league the boxers face opponents from? Or what leagues, I should say. Oh, we missed it. Yeah, uh, he. There's no way he whiffed that bad. That might have been a little bit on purpose. He had an empty, empty net, and Walpole's too good of a team. Yeah, you know, Birmingham keeping it in the boxer offensive zone. Jack Sylvia behind the Brockton net, 9.06 to go, sending it a little bit too long. And Walpole takes back over. Nathan El Shami trying to chase this one down. Walpole winning the race. Icing waved off. Sylvia is <laughs> completely upended. Rather, that was Kirkshank. Completely upended. So Walpole passing it around the boxer zone. Colburn with a shot stick save by Stagnone. So last game for the Rebels. They won six to nothing over Norwood. James Corker in the goaltender. Recorded an assist in that game. From the goalie. From the goalie. Because why not? So I'm looking here for the Bay State League. And it just tells me the sports. It's not telling me what teams are in there. And that's from the MIA website. 
No, that's Wikipedia. Shame on me. Let's see what the MIAA app has to say. They're in the Bay State. They are in the Bay State. I feel bad for the Bay State League. Well, one thing the MIAA has done right, it's a very short list, but their app is pretty, yeah. pretty phenomenal. Yep. Their last five games for Walpole, a six to nothing victory over Norwood. Really? As another goal, this one going to number 24, Paul Heffernan. Three to one victory over Newton North, a three to one victory over Natick. Who we saw come in and, and the box was hung tough. Yeah, I mean, four, four to two. two. One oh versus Braintree, six to one over Dedham, and four one over Milton. Their one draw in the year goes to Framingham. It's just going to be interesting to see what the Super 8 is going to be this year. I would expect it would be at least three or four from the Catholics. Hingham probably would get in. Falmouth Walpole. usually up there as well. Of course, the boxers first round matchup normally down at Gallo Ice Arena in beautiful Bourne, Massachusetts, right over the bridge. Because when it's 60 degrees outside, nothing says New England like a trip to the Cape. Yeah. Stop over at Sandy's right at the bridge for dinner. Scallop platter. Cup of chowder. Getting seafood in New England. It's either going to be Maine or the Cape. Cape. Sandy's has been around since I was a kid. And never had a bad meal down there. This one deflecting back to the end boards. Corcoran making yet another save. Be interested to see the numbers if he's close to the record for saves in a season. He's only allowed 11 goals. By 56 to go in an action packed third period. Seven to nothing for the Rebels. We have offsetting minor penalties. Anthony Paul. And Andrew Moore headed to the box. Up, oh, Ned Jaron. And like I said, they have to be real careful Brock not to do anything stupid. Paul and Moore in the box. Two minutes, one would assume, for something like unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, that would be my guess. A shot, Corcoran. Makes the pad safe, sending it to the end boards. Massaro in there fighting for the puck. Walpole coming away with it. Walpole right back into the Brockton zone. Saucer pass complete, but the shot went wide. Dan Savory, the sophomore forward, getting some Ice time late in this game. Massaro spinning with it, sending it off the boards. And out into the neutral zone. Number 
21 going down Luke Donovan, the senior forward. Still down on the ice. Oh, giving him the business too over there. The ref was three feet from it. Arms stayed down, trying to waste out the remainder of this 422 left in the third period. Massaro coming away with it. So barring a few small miracles and a big miracle, the Walpole will escape the season. Undefeated 21-0-1 for the Rebels. They're the only undefeated team in D1. But due to strength of schedule, they're only sixth ranked in the state. Okay. Now how do you feel about going into the tournament not losing? The way Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think the tie to Framingham was a, a big moment. It put, because before that, they were what, 15 and 0, 16 and 0? Mm -hmm. That's a big moment that says, listen, if Framingham can take it to us, anyone can. So we need to pick it up and not play down to the opponents like we saw Brockton do against Durfee. Right. Because. You never know what what's it could have been the game against Framingham. Walpole could have lost. A shot blocker saved by Stag to the end boards. Because right, I always see that with, um, you know, especially with March Madness and basketball, you want to be the undefeated team going into the tournament that everybody wants to knock off. Same thing with football. Do you want to go into the to the BCS championship bowl game undefeated? It's almost as like you have a bullseye on your back for everybody. Especially in the Super 8, you'll see Malden Catholic up there. BC High. Arlington Catholic will probably yeah. be in there. Wish there was a Super 8 for basketball, then we wouldn't have to see Cambridge. Uh, it, it, there has been talk about that for a long time for all, the, for not all, but a the sports where the, the Catholics this one loops dominate, and wide. I think it would be great. They do it for baseball. Um, they do it for hockey. There's no reason that basketball shouldn't be in. I'd love Maybe to see football. it for football. Football would because be. Because nobody can hang with the Catholic Conference. CM, BC High, Severian. Yeah. It's, so that's something that will be open for discussion, I'm sure, in the years to come. I would also like to see some public schools invited to play Thanksgiving at Fenway Park. It's the last two years when I started this. It's been Severian, BC High, Catholic Memorial, and Malden Catholic. With no change to that lineup in year two. I remember the good old days, Brockton Waltham and then mm -hmm. Brockton Severian on Thanksgiving Day. One twenty left to go in a very exciting third period here at Easy Off Arena. Seven to nothing, the Walpole Rebels over the Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, alongside Kevin Cairo, bringing you all the action. And there's been, been plenty of action today. Plenty of action. Oh, what a good move out in front for number three, Cullen McGlynn. We want to take this opportunity to thank our cameraman for today's festivities. Normally, Mike the Postman Simmons, today, the post office is closed. It's Jay Miller's wall pull on a break, a backhanded shot, and an easy goal for number nine, Ted McElhaney. Wall pull going up by eight, 42 seconds to go. Our cameraman for today's festivities is the one, the only jumping Jay Miller. And the postman will have to ring twice. <laughs> this Sunday to make up for the, his absence today. Dan Savory and Luke Donovan, the two assists on the Walpole goal. 30 seconds to go, Walpole not happy enough to waste out the clock. Watch another shot, another glove save by Adam Stagnone. Despite the 
eight goals. Oh, it, probably I mean, a decent save percentage on the day for Adam Stack. I, I, he would. I'm going to say 40 shots at least he's seen. And remember, we set the over under at 33. 33. Ten seconds left. Walpole with a two on one. Three seconds, number five can't get a shot off. Quintley Dan Savory, the buzzer sounds. And for, and for one team, thankfully, this one's over. Walpole celebrating their undefeated yeah. season on one end of the ice, and Brockton looking forward to Mansfield on the other. Yep. The Rebels complete the 21-0-1 campaign. That's a scary thought. They're no, that's a good sixth team. Sixth ranked. Man, that's a good team. Uh, and, and for as disappointing as it is to, to get shot out at home, ain't nothing. It, it was a lot of fun to watch the Walpole team. It was. I mean, they do all the little things. We may be looking at the Super 8 champ if they get in. With, with the goalie, only giving up 11. Um, and just how they're just a sound defensively, offensively, doing all the little things, and they're physical. Talk about the work of senior goaltender James Corcoran. Like, he, like we mentioned, 11 goals all year, and he's played in all 22 games. He had quite the game today. If the boxers played like this against anyone else, I'm confident that they yeah. could put up a victory. Yeah, I, I think you're right. But uh, they came in a little overmatched, and... But the effort was there, and that's, like we say, work hard and be ready to play the next game. And they will be on Friday, I guarantee it. Well, once again, the final score from AZ Afarina, 8 to nothing. The Walpole Rebels go undefeated 21-0-1 this season, getting the victory today over the Brockton Boxers. For everyone here at BCA Sports, our cameraman, Jay Miller, my broadcast partner, Mr. Kevin Caro. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.